Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, just in case you missed it, it was just last Friday, December the 1st. That's when the Mormon-owned Angel Studios released their latest film, which is titled The Shift. Once again, we find the lines now being blurred between Mormonism and Christianity. And to make my case, I, I first don't mean to suggest here that Mormons shouldn't make movies. And I'm not even here to discourage you from going and watching this film. No, instead, I'm here to address the concerns that I have regarding those who are calling this a Christian film. For example, I want to consider the way that one popular YouTuber endorsed this film as, and I quote here, the best and latest Christian film to date. I'm referring to a video that was recently posted by John McRae, you know, the guy who runs the YouTube channel called What Do You Meme? Now, if you're unfamiliar with this channel, McRae is a content creator who addresses apologetic issues as well as pop culture pro uh, problems. And, and he's also a chapter director and speaker for Reasonable Faith as well as Ratio Christie. And with all this being the case, well, I was a bit surprised to find him referring to The Shift as a Christian movie. You know, one reason uh, for why this was surprising to me is because The Shift was written and directed by a Mormon named Brock Heasley. And while it's true that Heasley refers to himself as a Christian filmmaker, the fact is he's a member of the LDS Church, who actually served uh, his mission as a Spanish-speaking missionary from 1996 to 1998. Now, more recently, it was just last year when the Salt Lake Tribune identified Heasley as a Mormon, uh, and, and they did this in the headline that read this, and I quote, Studio behind The Chosen picks a Latter-day Saint to write, direct its first feature film. Uh, well, it's here in this same article where we learn that Heasley is, and I quote, the father of three and member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay, so The Shift, it's a sci-fi movie written by a Mormon and produced by Angel Studios, which is owned by a Mormon family. That being the case... We should ask, why in the world is John McRae endorsing this as possibly the best and latest Christian film to date? That's right, the What Do You Meme guy is, uh, is now posting a video titled, The New Christian Movie is Insane. Now, I was hoping that this was just clickbait, uh, you know, created to capture the attention of those who are curious. And yet, McRae actually took the time to endorse this film as the most creative and unique movie that he's seen in the genre that he calls Christian cinema. Now, it should be noted that he began by first pointing out that The Shift is a modern retelling of the story of Job. That's what he calls it, a modern retelling of the story of Job. But then after describing the film in this way, you know, McRae goes on to share his biggest gripe about the film by declaring this, and I quote him here, even though the story was based on the book of Job because there was so much happening in the film, it almost felt like the story of Job was more of an afterthought that was added to the film later rather than it being the basis for the film. Or in other words, it felt more loosely inspired by the book of Job rather than it being a one-to-one -one correlation with the story. Uh, okay, so this so-called modern retelling of the story of Job isn't really a retelling of the story of Job. <laughs> That's right. McRae's biggest complaint about this movie is that it's based on the fact that the modern retelling of the story of Job isn't really presenting us with a modern retelling of the story of Job. And while McRae seems to be a bit baffled by this conundrum, those who understand Mormon theology, uh, well, we are not surprised by this at all. In order to make my case, it'll help you to know that the book of Job begins with a meeting that takes place before the throne of God. It's in Job chapter 1. There we learn about the day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Now, according to LDS theology, God the Father actually sired spiritual children with all of his heavenly wives, and they believe that this is uh, what's being referred to here in Job chapter 1 as the sons of God. Now, we understand that these are the angels that God created, but the LDS Church teaches that, you know, God the Father sired all these spiritual children, and, and not only that, but they also believe that Jesus was the firstborn child of God the Father, and yet they also believe that Satan was also a child of God. 
proof of my point can be found in the LDS website uh, where we find uh, an article that's titled, How Can Jesus and Lucifer Be Spirit Brothers When Their Characters and Purposes Are So Utterly Opposed? Now, in this article, which is written by the director of the Institute of Religion at Utah State University in Logan, Utah, this article begins in this way. On first hearing the doctrine that Lucifer and our Lord Jesus Christ, our brothers, may seem surprising to some, especially to those unacquainted with latter-day revelations. But both the scriptures and the prophets affirm that Jesus Christ and Lucifer are indeed offspring of our Heavenly Father and therefore spirit brothers. That's right, the leaders of the LDS Church teach their congregants that both Jesus and Lucifer are the literal offspring of our Heavenly Father. And here's how it's presented in the earlier editions of Gospel Principles. This is a standard work for the Mormon Church, and it was from 1978 all the way through 2008 when they explained it in this way, and I quote, Two of our brothers offered to help. Our oldest brother, Jesus Christ, who was then called Jehovah, said, Here am I, send me. And Satan, who was called Lucifer, also came. That's right. The LDS book, Gospel Principles, up until 2008, explicitly presented Jesus and Lucifer as brothers. And you better believe that this theology drastically affects the interpretation of Job. You see, the main difference between the Mormon Jesus and the Mormon Satan well, it's found in the fact that the Mormon Jesus was a spirit child of God the Father who wanted to give the rest of uh, humanity the freedom to choose salvation by trusting in him, while the Mormon Satan wanted to force us to redeem mankind uh, by force. You know, he wanted to use force to redeem us rather than allowing us to have free will. And, and when God the Father decided to roll with the salvific plan of Jesus, well, that's when the Father's son, Lucifer, or Satan, decided to lead a great rebellion against his brother Jesus. Well, now, as we consider this theology surrounding the Mormon doctrine of the pre-existence, which includes the brotherhood of Jesus and Satan, well, there should be no doubt that a Mormon screenwriter who decides to create a modern-day retelling of Job is going to come up with a completely different story due to the fact that they've embraced the belief that God the Father is an exalted human who has sired a multitude of children with his heavenly harem of wives. Not only that, but the Mormon church also assures us that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. And the reason why? Well, it's because God the Father physically procreated with the Virgin Mary in the most literal sense. Here is how LDS President Ezra Taft Benson explains it, and I quote here, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints proclaims that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in the most literal sense. President Benson doubled down on this by declaring this, and I quote him again, The body in which he performed his mission in the flesh was sired by that same holy being we worship as God, our eternal Father. Jesus was not the son of Joseph, nor was he begotten by the Holy Spirit. Simply put, Mormon theology presents God the Father as literally having sex with the Virgin Mary, and in this way they believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. This is straight-up, twisted, and even pornographic theology. Now, with all this being the case, there shouldn't be any confusion as to why the shift is, as John McRae describes it, loosely inspired by the book of Job, rather than it being a one-to-one -one correlation with the story. Remember, the writer and the director of this film, he's a Mormon and not a Christian. Therefore, we should expect this film to be based more on the heresies of Mormonism than on the straightforward account that we find in the book of Job. Sadly, John McRae seems to be more excited to endorse this film without any real reservation at all. In order to make my case, let's consider something that McRae said near the end of his video when he declares this, and I quote him, Now, obviously, much like any biblical adaptation, no matter how loose or moderate, there were several Christian themes in this movie, from overcoming our personal struggles to helping the least of these. Uh, okay, so, so there were several Christian themes in this movie, like overcoming our personal struggles. Listen, I, I'm pretty sure that this is a major component of every single movie ever made, including every horror film that includes a protagonist trying to escape a psycho killer, you know. Should we start describing Halloween as a movie that contains Christian themes as the protagonist tries to overcome, you know, you know, 
this is just ridiculous. John McRae then wrapped up his endorsement of this Mormon film by declaring, overall, I thought that this film was creative, unique, and different from anything we've seen before in Christian cinema. Seriously, Christian cinema is what he says. And, and yet I have, I have yet to see a case for this film belonging to the genre of Christian cinema. Is it Christian cinema because, what, there's no curse words or something like that? Listen, after mistakenly referring to the shift as Christian cinema, he goes on to declare this, and I quote him again. While watching this movie, I was genuinely surprised at just how far Christian movies have come in the last few years. And then without blushing, McRae encourages his audience to click on the link in his video in order to purchase tickets with a small discount. That's right, the What Do You Mean guy is now peddling tickets for the Mormon-owned Angel Studios. And again, I, I'm not here to tell you whether to, to, to go to this movie or not, and I'm not here to tell you whether to give your money to these Mormon filmmakers or not. I'm, I'm just you know concerned that people like John McRae are quick to call this a Christian film. And I want you to understand that The Shift is not a Christian movie. It is not a Christian movie in any stretch of the imagination. No, instead, this is a sci-fi film written by a Mormon who is presenting us with the book of Job through the lens of LDS heresy. And it's sad to say that there are those who are using our desire for more Christian entertainment to blur the lines between Christianity and Mormonism. That being the case, I encourage you to remember that Angel Studios is a Mormon-owned company. And as such, there should be no doubt that this influence will be found in their television shows and in the films they produce. And with that being the case, I just encourage you to get equipped. Get equipped so that you know the difference between the theology of true Christianity and the heresies of Mormonism. And in this way, we will become those believers who are equipped and ready to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.